Hi folks, welcome to the second in the Inked series. Um, in today's video I am just um, going in with more layers of ink and the final layer of resin on all of them. Um, I hope I don't jump about too much. I was, because they're so small, I was working on a couple at a time. And yeah, it could, I did have the thought that it could get hard to watch. So I uh, apologise if that is the case. So let's get into it. I'm working out in the sun here because it's an effect that I want to get when the. Um, water evaporates off the ink and it um, leaves leaves lines all around the area and I think it looks really really cool um, though there is a, um, a consistency of ink to water ratio that you need don't ask me what it is but you can see in the top well, here actually you can see the tiny thin lines that are around it and I just think they look really really cool so that's what I was aiming for so I think it's quite a high ink ratio to water to leave the nice dark lines you can see it on the black there it looks really cool So I've added a little bit more texture to the black one and um, gone over in the center part with a little bit of white and um, some of the brown, well it's not brown, it is brown but it's a sparkly brown. I thought it was a bronze but it's not even that, it's just a sparkly brown. Um, so yeah, I'm just adding... Um, a multitude of colors here just to blend it in with the background that's already there. I should have said the texture was a, um, a casting plaster mix that I was adding to a board at um, a new board that I was working on preparing and um, so that's why I use that. I've also been experimenting with um, making my own texture pastes and they're not too bad not too bad at all but I will probably share those in an upcoming video so back to the the, the black and brown one the textured piece I made up a mix of these two colors and um, I put it on and didn't like it <laughs> so that led to a um, a lot more a lot more a few more layers going on um, I was aiming for a rust but uh, it didn't work um, I think there was too much black anyway it didn't work and that's what matters so I'm just going in again with that um, sparkly brown and adding some uh, just some other colors to just add to that textured wear and tear and concrete kind of look that I'm going for um, it is a shame that it's such a small piece because it would have looked amazing on a you know, on a on a really big piece. So on that yellow one, all those disappear. I was just playing with the nozzle of the um, dropper just to see what kind of effect it had. So just in with some green and a little bit of black to make it a darker green. And these will be going out into the sun to dry. Here I'm just adding another layer to the yellow one. Um, 
and with the olive green and with a bit of black just to add a little bit of depth in the colour and I'm also again adding it to the, um, the textured piece just for depth also still. Um, I do go ahead and add some black down, I'm oh, sorry, white down in the lower left hand corner. Um, off the top of my head now I have no idea why I did it but I would have had a reason at the time I think. So again with the green, oh no that was the black sorry, I um, wanted some more lines on there and I thought I might be able to do it with that but it didn't work so I went in with the, the thin nozzle of the um, containers. So I think this is actually the last layer that goes on and it goes out in the sun to dry and on this one I was trying to recreate those little thin lines but to no avail so I end up actually just dabbing it off and um, because it has started to dry it does leave a little bit of a mark in there but only a little bit and it actually looks quite cool it looks like a fingerprint so with that done um, I'm about to do the final layer of resin these are already stuck in their frames so that's why I have um, taped up the edges so I don't get resin on the the frames so I um, start this one first because this was my favorite all the way through um, I'm going to resin half of it or and then show you so and bring it close up so you can see what a difference the resin makes makes um, I actually thin my resin down so I won't tell you which resin I use because they would be absolutely horrified that I do it um, it just makes it when I'm working on things like this they don't um, that's not as thick a layer essentially and it goes a little bit further but I mean we're talking two percent it's thinned down by so pretty much next to nothing but I just find that it does help with the consistency of it especially if I'm adding multiple layers of resin don't really want multiple thick layers because then it just starts looking weird um, yeah so there we go nearly all done I will um, I finish all these off um, off camera because you don't need to see it. <laughs> so they're sitting just sitting in the frames. I they aren't actually put in, but they are all um, dried overnight. Um, still a little bit soft, but dry. But they look really cool all the layers of can't you could see them if it wasn't for my shadow or my reflection in it but yeah I think that one looks really cool and the brown was called an iridescent rich brown um, the frames are just pine and the, I have got um, that Japan um, dark stain on it um, yeah it was starting to go gluggy in the tin so I've transferred it to the jar and thinned it thinned it down a little I don't know whether that's gonna work I might end up having to buy a new one never mind So thanks for watching and um, please like and subscribe, that would be really amazing. And if there was a particular effect or one 
that you liked, please let me know in the comments below. Cheers, bye!